In this video, we explore the Blue Mosque in Hagia Sophia, try Turkish breakfast, and experience Turkish coffee for the first time. It's very interesting. Come discover some of Istanbul's iconic landmarks and savor its beloved culinary traditions with us. We took a short metro ride across the Galata Bridge that goes over the Golden Horn and to the old Fatih district that is home to the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia. The Blue Mosque, also known by its official name, the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, is one of the most iconic structures of Ottoman architecture. It features the signature Ottoman central dome surrounded by various semi-domes and flanked by six minarets. Built in 1609, it remains a functioning mosque today. Visitors are welcome outside of prayer times. The call to prayer happens six times a day in Istanbul and prayer times vary depending on time of day. The mosque is closed to non-Muslims 30 minutes before and approximately 30 to 60 minutes after each call to prayer. To check the prayer times during your travel, simply Google Call to Prayer Istanbul and you'll find a real-time prayer schedule which you can use to plan your visits to any mosque. We found that the best time to visit was between 8.30 and 9.30 a.m. And while there is still a crowd, the line to get into the mosque is much shorter than if you go later during the day. In a place like this, it's easy to get caught up in capturing the moment through a lens but sometimes the best memories are made by simply being present and soaking in the atmosphere. The Blue Mosque, with its intricate designs, stunning domes, and historical significance, offers a true immersive experience that goes beyond what any photo can capture. We made sure to take our time to just stand and gaze at the artistry and reflect on the centuries of history that have unfolded in this very space. And it was a truly profound experience. By the time we finished visiting the Blue Mosque, it was already late morning and the crowd started to pick up, so we decided to go out to breakfast and postpone our visit to Hagia Sophia until the next morning. We ordered Turkish breakfast for the second time in Istanbul, and we were pleasantly surprised to find that this restaurant had its own unique take on the signature Turkish dish. It was a feast for the senses with a variety of flavors and textures. The next morning, we eagerly headed back to the Fatih district to check out Aya Sophia. So we're here at Aya Sophia at about 9.15 in the morning right now, and there is such a big difference in the amount of people here. So far, all we're really seeing is just tour groups and there's not nearly as long of a line to get in. Aya Sophia is a short two minute walk from the Blue Mosque through the Sultan Ahmed Square. Hagia Sophia is a masterpiece of Byzantine architecture. It was built in 532 AD and took only five years to complete. The name Hagia Sophia comes from the Greek language and means holy wisdom. It was a Christian cathedral for 916 years until the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople in 1453 when it was converted into a mosque. In 1934, it was secularized and turned into a museum, but it once again became a mosque in 2020 following a court ruling. It was an incredibly humbling experience to walk through a building that has been standing and in use for almost 1,500 years. The layers of history within the walls of such a structure are indeed awe-inspiring. Here, art and history are not just displayed but are palpably felt through every stone and mosaic. The presence of mosaics depicting Christian iconography alongside Islamic calligraphy is a visual representation of the building's complex history and the changing empires it has witnessed. This is an experience we won't soon forget. We're 
at a restaurant now that's in between Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque. We thought the prices would be high just because it's near the historic sites, but they're actually comparable to what you would find down the street. And we once again ordered a Turkish breakfast. It seems like when you get a Turkish breakfast, it's different at every place you go. So I would try it in multiple different places because they each serve different delicacies. I also decided to give Turkish coffee a try. It's very interesting. There's the coffee grounds in it. The flavor of the coffee itself is... I don't know how to describe it. It's worth a try. I don't think I would have this again. <laughs> That's what a lot of people say. It tastes like old cabinet. That's, that's what I'm tasting, like old wooden cabinet. That's the aftertaste you get. Yeah, but when was the last time you licked an old wooden cabinet? No, the smell. Yeah. It tastes like the smell of an old oh, wooden cabinet. There you go. Not a fan. That's just well, you a nice have to, way of saying it tastes bad. No, but you have to try it. Yeah. You have to try it. You can't, you can't go to a country and not try the main thing of that country. You yeah. have to try it. I thought you would like it because you like coffee so much. But... I know, but I do like coffee and yeah. I'm a coffee snob. And this tastes like old wooden cabinet. <laughs> it does not taste like what I think coffee should taste like. I had Steve try it too. definitely different <laughs> it's a little watery actually yeah not not very strong but not like the coffee we're used to after that we took a stroll through the Arasta Bazaar which is right next to the Sultan Ahmed Square here you can find many unique goods and even some cats Come back next week to join us on our adventure to the unique city of Urgup in the famous Cappadocia region. Mm -hmm.